I often get asked the question, was Link always the dream of my heart? Is it something I saw myself doing uh, in my life? And uh, the truth is not always. Uh, when I first got saved and God got a grip on my heart and started to stir faith inside of me for His church, and I always wanted to be a part of something significant and amazing and unique and robust and powerful and exciting and faithful. And But I had no idea that it would happen the way it did. And I remember reading that book by Bill Hybels, Courageous Leadership. I remember to this day opening up on that page and it made the statement, the local church is the hope of the world. And then it said this, when it's working right. And I started to think about this idea, what would it look like for the church to work right? I mean, I'd seen expressions of church. I'd grown up in different stories and some I loved, some I wasn't sure of. Uh, but the truth is my heart was stirring and this idea made sense to me that the church should be the hope of the world. If Jesus is at the center of the church and Jesus is at the hope of the world, then surely the church should be something people want to be a part of. And uh, so from those early days, I started to write down the dream of the church and ask God to stir my heart. What would it look like, God, to be a part of a story that was so irresistible that people from all over would come and want to be a part of it? And uh, so that's how Link started. I remember sitting in Russell's kitchen at times, uh, dreaming of this idea of Link Church. At that stage, it wasn't going to be called Link. And we had no idea what the name would be. But I remember writing down what would be our value system? What would make us who we are? What would people talk about when they spoke about Link? And uh, we started to write this down on a piece of paper and we started to dream and engage each other. And we would spend time praying together, God, give us faith uh, for this story. And those were exciting days. And uh, I, I remember them fondly. And uh, I remember there were even times where I felt like if we don't do this now, God, the world is going to miss out on something of your story. And so Link was born. And I remember the first meeting in Russell's home, 14 of us in his lounge. And it was nothing special, to be honest. Uh, we were really excited, but we were really inadequate and really unskilled and unsure. And uh, it was exciting, but it was strange because there weren't many of us. And I kind of led worship, then I preached the message, and then I prayed for people. And uh, I just couldn't wait for that to change. And, but God did what He said He would do. And he started to build Link Church. And he started to take the dream that was birthed in our hearts and show us that it wasn't a selfish dream. It was his dream. It was his intention, his idea all along. And uh, as we started to go about this thing, he started to add people and add value and add finances. And I remember the one Sunday we actually cleared our bank account. Russ came up with this pretty crazy idea that we would clear our bank account and make a statement to the city that the church would be a generous people. And, uh, and so we cleared 30,000 Rand and envelopes of 500 Rand each, gave them to our people and said, go into the city and ask God where He wants to make a difference. And literally we had stories coming back to us of 500 Rand that would do windows on their, on their domestic workers' house or put their kids in school for a, a month or two or I don't know, there were some crazy stories. But that was the start of our generous journey. And Link has always been a generous church and I thank God for that. I remember other times where we would have family days and the only play park we had was the R102 and a little bit of grass next door. And it was wild and it was crazy. And we weren't sure if it was helpful, but it's all we had. And we've always been a church that made the most of what we had. And we would run after our kids and make sure they didn't get on the, on the highway and, and, you know, get taken out by a truck. And, but God was good. And uh, He would add to us and the space would change and the Leachy Orchard would become our new home. And as it became our new home, we started to realize one more time, God was fully committed to building the church that He had birthed in our hearts. A church that was passionate about people. A church that was excited about change. Uh, really passionate about centering ourselves on excellence, you know. Uh, we didn't want to be a little country club in the background. We wanted to be the center of the city. People talking about excellence and creativity and, and uh, expression of faith that was, I think, amiss maybe in so many church expressions. And so he put us in the leachy orchard and we just made the most of it. A little shed uh, that would become the hub of activity for Link Church. And what an exciting time it was. I remember Sundays sweeping out that shed after a wedding and kind of mopping its floors and setting out its chairs. And they weren't glamorous times, but they were exciting times. And every time we swept the floor and every time we set out a chair, there was something in us that said, God, if we would dig this ditch, would you send the rain? And if we would just prepare these chairs, would you fill them with passionate people? And uh, God would fill those chairs week in and week out. I love our church. I love what, what she has become. I love the people God has added to us. I, I still remember when uh, Sa joined us on our creative team and we started to dream of film. What if our church became known for a church of creative expression where film would become something that we were known for? 
Uh, it would become a centerpiece of what God was doing in our lives. And at the time, it was like, how on earth, God, is this going to happen? But again, God has done it. I would, I would suggest that we've become a statement of excellence in film, not just in church, but in the world of film and industry. And uh, I just love that. I love that God is using us to, to set trends and to model excellence in every area of life. And so He would add families, and so children would come. Our kids' church would explode. We would have two little rooms, 64 square meters of space, just flooded with up to 150 kids at a time. It was crazy. And, uh, and every, every time it happened, we were saying, God, thank you, would you explode it? And the parents were like, is this helpful? And the teachers were like, it's chaotic. And we were like, it's what we dreamed of. And so that was Link Church. And two years ago, obviously, you know, we built this building. And uh, we hoped that the building would become an expression of who we are. A good friend, Tony Rainbow, once said to me, that your building should be a prophetic statement of who you are as a people. And I feel like as we put this building up on a hill, as we made a statement to this city, we are linked and we have found our voice and we don't have all the answers, but we're sure of Jesus and we know with confidence that if you give Him some permission, He could change your life. And the building went up and the city started to ask questions and people started to come and check us out. And every time it happens, we just said, you know what, this is about Jesus. And uh, Link's always been about Jesus. It's never been about big buildings. It's never been about uh, you know, fancy stories or, or big, loud, anthemic worship. It's a part of who we are. But deep down, this has always been an excitement around the name of Jesus. And I really know that every time someone steps into this church, every time they hear us open our mouths, every time they open our doors, they would encounter not just worship, not just film, not just expression, but they would encounter Jesus. The name above every other name. The name for which we exist and the name for which we come together week in and week out to serve the story of God. And uh, as Link has continued to grow and expand uh, from being 14 people in a lounge to being over a thousand people on a weekend, I just look at this and say, God, if you could do this in seven years, imagine what you could do with ordinary people like us over the course of our lives. I believe, friends, that the story is just getting started. That the story of Link, the expression of the gospel in the North Coast community and into this nation is just getting started. And as God starts to open new opportunities, I believe He will stir a greater faith to take us into places we've never been. May we fill this building with 800, 1,000 people, three, four, five times a weekend. May we plant churches into Durban. May we take ourselves into spaces we've never dreamt of going. May we invade the business world with the message of the gospel and the hope of Jesus that they would shape the economy around a different name in the name of Jesus. And I pray that as you watch this story, as you see our heart real, as you hear what God has done, that you wouldn't just sit on it and, and, and let it just be, oh, that's awesome from a distance, but that it would stir an inner faith in your heart, that it would cause you to want to stand up and say, I want to be a part of the next season. I want to stand up for this next season. I want to allow Jesus to use the little that I have to shape the more that He has for us. And as you continue to bring the little that's in your hands, may He continue to multiply into an awesome story that the mustard seed would become mountain moving faith. There's so much to be grateful for in this story. So many moments that I maybe haven't had a chance to share, but just highlights that this story is something worth celebrating. God's faithfulness has been so true of our lives and of this story called Link. And uh, I'm just so excited that if God can do this in seven years, imagine what He could do in our lifetime. And we believe in that we would see even greater things come before us. So come on now, church, start to put your hands together. Let faith stir in your heart. Let expression come alive in us. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some glory. Let's celebrate His faithfulness. I believe that the best days lie before us. So give Him some praise. Give Him some glory. Give Him some noise. And let our lives become expression of His faith. Come on, church. Let's lift it up for Jesus.